guys, welcome to my channel, it's Lucy Lipsy. If you haven't been here before, then welcome. This is my channel, we're currently doing 31 days of Spooktober, and we cover everything spooky, creepy, or just fascinating. So if you've been with me since the start of Spooktober, then you'll know that I usually cover things that are hauntings. However, today, this caught my eye, and I thought, why not bring in an unsolved murder? It's local, just like what I've tried to stick to with the rest of the things that I've covered. So I'm still sticking to that. However, when I do finish Spooktober, we'll be going further afield and looking around all of the UK. This story today is going to be about 12-year-old Muriel Drinkwater, who was unfortunately killed in 1946. This case is known as the Little Red Riding Hood case. Now, like I said, Muriel Drinkwater was 12 years old. She lived with her mother, Margaret, her father, Percy, and her four sisters on Tiller D Farm in Pentlegare. On the 27th of June, 1946, Muriel came home from her usual day at school in Pentlegare Grammar School. Now, she used to take the bus home and then she would walk the short distance from the bus stop to her home. It was around a mile long and it would weave in and out of the trees in the forest of Pentlegare Woods. The farm that she lived on was quite deep in the forest, so she did have to walk quite a fair bit before she reached her own home. On this particular journey home, she had bumped into Hubert Hoyles. He was 13 years old and he was just coming back from the family's farm to pick up some eggs for his mother. They exchanged hellos and she continued her walk. I have to explain that her house was basically backing on to the woods. And from where her mother stood, she could see her daughter as she walked back from school. She said that she was around 400 yards from her and she spotted her when she was doing the dishes from the kitchen window. So she decided to go out, wave at her daughter, they exchanged greetings, but then Muriel still had to walk a couple of minutes more. It said that it would only take about another 10 minutes for her to have gotten home and she had to curve around to get into the front door. The exchange of hellos and waves was the last that Margaret Drinkwater saw her daughter ever. Later that night, when Muriel didn't return home, Margaret took it upon herself to walk up to the local village to see if anyone had seen her. She also called in to the police station to ask if anyone had seen her there, to which they said no. A search party then took place for Muriel, consisting of more than a dozen men. It was a bad night, it was torrential rain and all anyone that went on that search could remember after it was the sound of Percy, her father's voice, as he shouted her name. Now there are two accounts online that I found from when Muriel was found. The most common says that she was found at 4.30pm. Now this is said to have happened the afternoon after. And then there's also the second claim that says that it was 10.35am the next morning. Either way, she was found by PC David Lloyd George. Now it said that he was searching and searching and then something caught his eye in the corner of his eye and he looked over and he saw the blue of her coat along with the red of her glove. She was actually in the undergrowth of a Japanese large plantation, so kind of like um, where they would grow things. She was found on her back, one of her arms down by her side, one raised above her head and her eyes were open but it was very clear from that moment that she was dead. The autopsy actually determined that poor Muriel had been bludgeoned in the head five times, raped, and then shot in the chest twice. Two days later, police found the murder weapon in the exact same undergrowth that they found Muriel. Now, it was an automatic pistol. It was described as a Colt 45. Now, this weapon is actually very peculiar because it was an American weapon. They were first issued in the First World War and they could have been used in the second, but this had been personalized. This gun was used and circulated in photos throughout the village basically trying to identify the killer. Now the detective that's now covering the case says that he thinks that it was brought back from the war, sold on or swapped for something. Now I'm gonna move forward to this day and age quickly just to tell you guys that it was sent to the FBI and it was not able to be identified because so many people have actually touched the item until now. But it was identified as being made in Springfield Armory in 1942. It said that it was transferred over to the UK to give to a soldier, however it couldn't be identified what soldier it was issued to. The perspex grips on the side of the gun had been personalised, so whoever knew about the person who personalised perspexes, then they should have been able to identify who the killer was. Now going back to when the murder happened in 1946, 
Officers searched the whole area and couldn't find any more evidence. They actually visited every cottage and farmhouse for 150 miles around the farm and they actually identified a total of 20,000 men in Swansea, Carmarthen and Aberdare. Detective Chief Inspector William Bulldog Chapman was placed in charge of the murder of Muriel Drinkwater and he was so frustrated, he was absolutely vexed by the headlines that went absolutely crazy across the country. Obviously murder wasn't as common as it is now in those days and it was really focused on heavily saying that he wasn't making an effort to find the murderer and it really, really got him angry and he actually worked on this so hard until his death nine years later but he never found anything. A few weeks before he passed, Detective Robert Fabian found him looking through his papers saying this girl needs to be sorted. He kept muttering about unfinished business and how this girl deserved more saying she was going to be 12 forever and she deserved justice. More than 3,000 mourners attended the funeral of Muriel Drinkwater. On July 2nd it was in a local church that she actually attended for Sunday school. After the passing of DCI Chapman, the murder case was, went unsolved and nobody concentrated on it until a couple of years ago where an interviewer, a journalist, called Paul Bethel. He just wanted to know if he knew anything about the murder because he actually happened to be a policeman when it was happening at the time. Paul Bethel didn't actually know anything about this murder and he decided not to say anything about it until he'd researched into it. He then took this on as his own job. As you can imagine, there were suspects for this murder. If you hadn't guessed it already, one of the suspects happened to be Hubert Hoyles. Now he was the little boy that Muriel passed on her way to the farm. He'd been buying eggs for his mother. Now for decades he was the person of interest and he was cruelly targeted and the phrase innocent until proven guilty was not treated on him. Because he was the last person, it was really easy to throw blame as well. Suspicion went quickly onto him and it was very unfair. He said he was made to feel like a murderer in his own village. He said it's hindered his life. There was also a possible serial killer that had done this. Sheila Martin, who was 11, who lived in Falkham Green, which is in Kent. She had been in a very similar situation. She had been murdered and raped in a forest. So people obviously pointed the finger and said whoever did this killed Muriel. But since then, that's been called off, links have not been drawn because Sheila Martin's murder is also unsolved, so there's nothing to link from. Now, it's said that the perpetrator had actually been waiting for Muriel to come past. Nobody knows if the perpetrator was trying to attack Muriel or if it was going to be any lady that passed or any woman or child or girl. He left stubs of cigarettes, empty sweet papers, crusts from sandwiches. He'd been waiting there for a while and it doesn't look like it was the first time he'd been there either. Nobody knows if he'd actually been stalking Muriel because apparently a few weeks before, police expect that Hubert saw the murderer. He said he was walking back from the family's farm and when he was on his way back, he saw a man with thick fluffy hair in his 30s with brown corduroy trousers on, a local accent, and he looked very stern. Now this may have not been him, but at the same time, authorities think that it definitely was and they've never seen him since. Also, if you don't live in a Welsh village, if you don't know, everyone actually knows each other. It's very common that you would pass someone and you'd know who they were. It's very rare for you to see someone and not think, oh, that's blah blah blah. Paul Bethel went to South Wales Forces Museum. He actually found a little box and he found it really sad because on the front of the box was Muriel's name. It said Muriel J drink water. And inside was the gun, two spent cartridges and a number of unused bullets. That makes it feel like the gun was bought specifically for her, in my opinion. And the gun had been so widely passed around, like I said, there was no DNA that could have been brought from it. However, Dr. Colin Dark, who had previously partnered up with Paul Bethel, said that if he could get evidence, other evidence, of her clothes or anything like that, he would be able to solve something and at least get DNA. Now this struck a chord with Bethel and he was able to go back to the headquarters in Cockett Police Station and he said that he remembered a little bit of red glove being on the floor of the storeroom. So he went there and when he went in he saw a little glove and he folded it back and he just said to his partner, you go that side, I go this side. Soon as he went to the back of the room, he found a little bag and it was entitled Muriel J Drinkwater. Every item had a little name sewn into it. 
her mother had sold her names into the items she had just in case they went missing at school they'd be able to get tracked back to her on the back of the coat they'd found in this little bag there was a yellow chalk mark in a circle inside the circle there was a little mark it just looked like liquid however when Bethel brought the item to dark he was able to identify it as semen now it's lucky that Muriel was actually on her back because if she wasn't on her back this wouldn't have been able to be identified it would have washed away with the rain dark was able to use the presence of the y chromosome search further and he was actually able to complete a full dna profile so basically guys the hunt is on the male would be in his 80s by now however if he is dead then the evidence could be gathered from his child so his son or his grandson if he has a son or a grandson now they've actually done this type of thing before Bethel and Dark together. So hopefully this will be solved. Hubert Hoyles, as you can imagine, was very happy to get finally proven innocent after all these years. He was one of the first people to give a swab of his DNA just so he could get proved innocent so everyone else would stop nagging him about it. There was also suspicion that Harold Jones, who had killed two young girls when he was 15 in Abtillery, he would have just been released from jail after 20 years serving the time for the girls that he had murdered. So he would have been 35 years old, putting him around the right age for the man that Hubert had seen. However, he was ruled out in 2019 by the DNA test. So that brings us to now, 74 years later. The case is still unsolved. They're still looking for the person that killed Muriel Drinkwater. In 2004, a new headstone was erected in Pentlegare on the child's grave. Nobody knows who put it up or how it got there, but it reads, In loving memory of Muriel Joan Drinkwater, who died in 1946 at 12 years old. There is no mention of the murder that took place. It's just a memorial for Muriel and for her family that still remain. There are fresh flowers put on the grave regularly. Nobody knows who puts them there, but it's just nice that it means that the little girl is still thought of. 12 forever. Muriel drink water. So thank you guys for watching this video. I know it's been really different to the rest and I really hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you did in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this, just let me know. I'm more than happy to do them. I actually found researching this really emotional and really interesting. If you're just finding me now, I would love it if you subscribe to me. Hit that notification bell if you do as well so I can alert you every time I upload. And guys, remember, never let anyone dull your sparkle.